All right, you guys, today I wanna to show you one of the more common ways to close the gap and get inside, especially if you are the peekaboo style fighter. Now, if you've been working this style for a while or trying to close the gap, it won't really be a mystery to you, but I wanna break down some of the details of it, show you some of the challenges you might run into, and then also give you a variation that might work for you if your opponent starts to pick up on what you're doing. So what I'm talking about is the jab with the duck and the gazelle step. Here I throw the jab, I corkscrew my way under, I bring my back leg in to get closer, and then I gazelle step through. If I'm gonna work it fast, it looks like this. Okay, here, you can cover a lot of ground that way. The jab here gets you going forward. If you just step on the front leg, then when you duck, you bring the back leg in. Okay, you go under, you just sort of corkscrew yourself. Then from here, my body's rotated. I corkscrew through, under, and then I gazelle step. <laughs> and that can cover a lot of distance for you and set up the lead hook down the road. Why this works so nice is here, I jab, or I jab, I close distance. When I'm corkscrewing like this, it's hard to hit me because my head is moving. I'm moving in a circular pattern. So it's hard to time me as I'm coming forward. Here, boom, I drop under, I bring that back leg in. So it's hard to hit me. So for that moment, I'm a little bit safe. Of course, fighters are still gonna punch down, they're still gonna try to get you, but it's harder to hit a moving target as opposed to if your head is at the middle coming straight in. So as I'm going under here, and then the gazelle step, depending on where they go, it covers a lot of room. I can change direction, I can see where my opponent goes. Here, jab, under, I can see. If they've changed direction, I can hunt them down. So this technique is very useful, really useful. You can also work it off a slip here. If I slip this way, then jab, then corkscrew, and then come under. It can work off the one, two, three, one, two, three, under, boom. The challenge with this is what happens is the outside fighter will start to read you. They'll, as soon as you do this and go down, they know already you're gonna do your corkscrew thing. So what they'll do is they'll get ready for that hook because that's one of the only shots you have. Of course, you can still come with an uppercut or a shovel hook, but the hook is the most common. So they'll start to block it, set it up, boom. Or another thing that they do is they wait till you're done, you throw and then you come up here and your head is out the middle and then boom, and then they hit you. So they start to figure out your patterns and start to time you. So there's two things that you can do to deal with that. One is you don't let the head movement stop. You don't stop right when you're done the corkscrew. You continue some more motion and then throw. And the other one is a variation on the footwork, which is one that I figured out that I had to do with certain people who knew what I was doing. And I haven't really seen it, but of course I'm sure a lot of boxers or some boxers out there are doing it and I'll show you that in a second. So the first thing to do is once you get to the finish, don't stop moving your head and I'll show you in slow motion. I jab, I come under, I throw the hook and immediately I don't stop here. If I miss or they block, I'm gonna slip and then come with the right hand. So if I face you here, I jab, duck, hook, drop. Boom, and then throw the right hand. I don't wanna let my head get stuck up the middle like that. So here, jab, duck, I throw the hook, and then I drop again, boom. So that way, I give them a little bit extra something to think about, I keep my flow. I keep my flow going. Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom, boom. You wanna keep that flow going. You don't wanna sort of stop and then check out what you've done, sort of admiring your work, that kind of thing. So once you get to that end there here, you do that little bit extra drop before you come back with your next punch. All right, now the next one is a variation on the step, on the footwork, to go the other way and to create an angle a different way. So this I started to use as the opponent started to figure out that, okay, here, here I come. As soon as I get to this position on the duck, and they're moving back, they know. So I had to switch it up. A lot of you might be familiar, you can watch Lomachenko, he does this a lot. A lot of fighters do this. They go down in a half duck, or they go down and they switch directions. Because when the opponent is throwing and, they, and you're ducking, 
they're going to throw to where they think you're going to be. So often if you want to psych them out, you duck under and then you stop halfway and then you come back up the opposite side. So I would do that with footwork. So instead of here and coming through, what I would do is throw the jab, come halfway down and see how I bring my leg in as I came down. Then I'm going to step out. I'm going to stop my footwork and then here I'm going to come under and then just come up come up on the other side. So here, I go here, and then here instead. And all that requires is you go left, right, right, left. You just sort of stop yourself and go back the opposite way and you create an angle. So if I'm gonna do it fast, it looks like this. And I'm here. From this angle, if I do it fast, it looks like this. Okay, I end up stopping myself and coming up the other side. Here I go again. And it sort of sets me up on a different angle. I'll go here. Okay, so instead of going here with the jab and flowing through and coming up with the gazelle, I'm gonna go with the jab, stop, come back, boom. It takes a bit of practice and a bit of getting used to but it's a nice switch up on the usual pattern. The footwork is like this. If I don't do any of the head movement. See that? Okay, that's what it is. I add in the head movement, no punching. See the, how that works? It's just left, right, right, left. Boom, boom. Okay, and then I'm there. This is a nice way, so instead of coming up the usual, you come under and you sort of stop yourself, but continue to move forward and you're gonna end up on a slight angle where you can throw the jab at the right hand or whatever you like. All right, you guys, I hope you like that little demonstration. One of the tactics that I commonly use, which is the jab with the duck, gazelle step, and lead hook. It's, it's quite common if you're working a pressure style, but also you can become predictable using it a lot. So if you're gonna end up there with the finish, you wanna add that little bit of head movement and maybe keep throwing, unless you've landed. As well, it gets predictable when you start to come under and as soon as you're ducking, they know what you're gonna do. So you can switch it up with that footwork and come over on an angle on the other side. It's a little bit of thought, a little bit of work. It's gonna take a little bit more practice, especially if you're a beginner. But once you get that basic footwork down, the left, right, right, left, it's not something that is going to be a bread and butter or go to all the time. Mix it in with your head movement and your other tactics and I guarantee you're going to give your opponent a lot more problems. You're going to be able to add a lot more pressure and close the gap, especially with that head movement, especially if you're a pressure fighter. Now, if you like the gear that I'm wearing in this video by Box Raw, boxing inspired gear, link is in the video description below. Check them out. All right, thanks for watching you guys. Peace.